the jellyfish. The ocean's most largest of sea creatures. Today on Brewing Labs, we look to answer the question, what if we were to give a jellyfish the most majestic and unknown creatures, an absolute boatload of equipment. Hello one and all, and welcome to a, well, let's just cut it to the chase. We're brewing a deck around Flump. That was the one where people won in the poll, so we're going to brew around Flump. Plump is a 2 mana zero four creature jellyfish. Hey, jellyfish tribal. I mean, how many jellyfish are in there? Hey, editor. Can you put all the jellyfish that are in magic around me? Sure. For some reason, uh, I can't read never all the jellyfish at the moment, but nevertheless, we got one from Adventures in Forgotten Realms based on a classic D&D monster. It has defender, it has flying, and whenever it's dealt damage, you and target opponent each draw a card. Now, I tried many variations when testing Flump. I did try to make a Voltron Flump list just for comedy purposes. That one, as you can probably guess, was not the best brew of the world. I even tried a variation where we go into like an equipment Voltron list. That was fun, but yet again, didn't work as well. So I kind of took a little bit of the quote unquote successes, and I mean successes in the quotation marks here from those uh, failed deck techs and, well, decided to put them in what basically is an Orzhov Snow control shell, which actually surprisingly works because Flump, drawing cards for your opponent is not bad if you're playing the control matchup. Like the symmetrical draw is least effective if you have ways to answer to what they're drawing into. And also if you have the better cards and better threats, which lucky enough with this list, we kind of did that with the snow control list. So let's go through the list. Early game, we have two blood sheets first for our removal and for eye twitch to help us access to our learn package. We're running two purple sword. This is kind of my funny inclusion. We should probably put four blood sheets first in here, but this is the one that is kind of fun in the list. It's a fun alternate win condition, plus also attaching it to flump actually makes it into a Death Touch Defender, so it kind of like makes it into a Improvise Vampire Nighthawk that draws your cards, which eh, it's not bad. Then we have Poet's Quill, that's the other part of the Learn Package. Yet again, I also like the lifelink aspect on this since we do have a little bit of life loss within this deck design. Plus, also just attaching it to Flump, we get a little bit of life along with the card draw when we're defending. We're running a full place at a Banshee first, probably one of the best removals in the format of Standard 2022 Rotation Proof very good card just exiles a lot of threats within the format then in the free drops we're playing free elite spell binder just a really good card we're putting one search for glory to help us tutor for any of our late game threats which is really really nice and also if needed if we need a tutor for a snow land we can do that we're running two poison in the cup just a really good unconditional removal as well as being able to scry if we foretell it very very nice we're also running two peladar retreat very nice in the control list, because if we are playing lands, we could just create the cat tokens, but if we have, like, flumps or other creatures out, being able to make our flump get bigger and such so it can block more later game threats, very, very nice. Then we're running pretty much the best planeswalkers to play with in Orzhov Control, which in this case is Wolf Spider Cream. Generates tokens, draws your cards, and if you get to the ultimate, you are... If you have, like, aggressive flyers, which we have with Spe Elite Spellbinder, as well as Eye Twitch, you can inevitably just drain your opponent out of the game. Then we're playing Kaya the Inex... Inex... Inexorable. I always get that pronunciation wrong, but hopefully I got it right this time. Nevertheless, it's a 5-mana Planeswalker, a very popular Planeswalker at the moment, since it helps us protect all of our creatures with the plus 1. We can also use it for removal with the minus 3, and if we get to the minus 7, the ultimate is not as effective in this list as it is in other lists of this variation, but... If we do get to the ultimate, getting to the ultimate and then recasting Kai again to have all these effects again, very, very nice. Then we have the deck of many things. This is just my one wild card of the deck. But a 
But anyway, basically, I like this in Control List the more I've been playing with this card. Very nice in Control List, just as long as you don't play activate this with a full hand. But when you get to later in the game, you get into like one or two cards in your hand, you don't really mind rolling this. And just having either a random Balagad Recovery or being able to draw cards, very nice. And if you're for some reason hellbent and you get the 20, awesome sauce. That could be the jank play of the day, essentially. Then, of course, as all Orzhov Snow control lists will play, we're playing free Blood on the Snow. Just good board wipe for our deck. Allows us to return one of our creatures, or even multiple creatures if they have ghost counters on them. Very, very nice. We're running one Professor Onyx. Just nice card draw. Drains our opponent. And if we can get to the ultimate, eh, that's pretty much game over. And also, it's good unconditional removal on the highest uh, power threat that our opponent has. We're running to Amerius Call. This is mostly just either played as a land, but later down the line, being able to get those two 4-4 angels helps us get more blockers on the battlefield or more aggressive flyers. That's a very, very nice. As for our land base, we're running one Cave of the Frost Dragon, four Snow-Covered Plains, one Hive of the Eye Tyrant, four Snow-Covered Swamps, four of the Orzhov Pathway, four of the Orzhov Snow Dual Land, Tap Land essentially, and three Faceless Haven. That is the deck. Our basic premise is to pretty much play Orzhov Snow Control with Flump being able to essentially help us get additional card draw to help us essentially keep further into the game. Now, the only question I have is, does Flump survive winter based environments? I don't know. Maybe someone who knows D&D very well could probably comment down below. I personally don't know. Nevertheless, let's play a few games with this list and uh, give it a shot. Why not? Okay, let's see here. Our first opponent is... Hmm, interesting username. Inferno82. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, okay, I see what they did there. Anyway, with this hand, it's pretty decent. We can do a turn two flump, turn three elite spellbinder if we don't mind bolting ourselves. The problem is we don't have any swamps for the inevitable loaf and blood on the snow, but we could inevitably draw into that. So here, I'm just going to play our bolt land tap so we don't have to bolt ourselves. We'll see what our opponent plays here. Okay, so they're playing red-green shenanigans. So, let's play down the jellyfish. And hope our opponent is not a SpongeBob of an opponent. Slap dab. He's the only guy I know that can have fun with a jellyfish for 12 hours! Can they remove the flump? Okay, so they're potentially playing Jun, it looks like. A Jun token this seems to be the case. Well, if that's the case, we're definitely going to leave Spellbinder to see what's in their hand. Yeah, kind of like your typical Jun stuff. They do have good removal. Let's see. So they can remove our stuff effectively. Bellagios is too late game at the moment that we don't have to worry about it. I think the Toski is the removal here. Make them not have that as a turn four play. Now the question is, is our opponent going to Blood Cheese first the uh, Flump? That is what I'm really legit curious about. Hmm. Here, I'm just going to go for the card draw. Like I said, we're playing control. It's better that we can control into more lands or more defenders like Flump. And if we force our opponent to eat a removal spell here, we don't mind. There we go. Yeah, this is... I guess we're going to play Flump number two. Yeah, I think we're going pretty aggro here. We'll see if they decide to remove this before attacking. They decide to go full on removal of the Elite Spellbinder, which... Yet again, makes a little bit of sense, since we're just going to have to block here. They draw a card, we draw a card. Makes sense. Yet again, the problem here is we really need a 
source of swamps. And we are not getting that, so we might be in a bit of a pickle this matchup. And the problem is, if we're going to play something inevitably, they're probably going to have the Binding of the Old Gods to remove it. Which then leads to another persnickety situation. Ugh. Okay, we'll play the Felidar Retreat here. We're probably fishing out a Binding of the Old Gods, if I'm being legit honest with y'all. They decided to play the Toski to get the card draw. Makes sense. Can we get a swap? Well, we can get one. Here's the play here. We're going to do this. We're going to search for Gorley. Auto pay it. Get ourselves the swamp we need. And we have the choice of either poisoning the cup here, destroying the sit sits. Which, I think I just want to poison the cup here. Destroy the sits sits. Hold this as a chump blocker, or at least half the fish out of removal spell. Okay, we're going to keep it like that. Because the snow sink hold is nice. We can hold on to the vanishing first to exile the Toski once we get to it. Though there is also an argument that, yeah, they're playing the villagers here. So we might actually just have to go into the Kaya route and just exile that. ASAP. Or there is an argument on holding the line, so to speak. Hmm. So yeah, they make their little pest token. We have mana for the inevitable. Let's see, how much snow mana do we have? One, two, three, four. Not enough to bring back a Kaya, unfortunately. But I still think this is the play. We do have to remove the uh, Belladros, because if that sticks on the field, we are in a bit of a pickle, one could say. Okay, why did they... Oh! Ho, 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 ho. Okay. That was a well good tempo play on our opponent, but uh, that did cost him 10 life, so they need to get some life gain and such, or else we're just going to... Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. Are we dead? We might just be dead. Let's see, six. Oh yeah, we're dead. <laughs> that's why they didn't mind. The part on. I wonder if our opponent realized that they had a lethal. Um. Okay. For the record, opponent, you had lethal. <laughs> Let's see, they have four cards in hand. Probably better we elite spellbinder here. Yeah. Let's see what's in their hand. They get some card life draw. Let's see what's in their hand. Removal. Do we want to make snake skin? No, we want to make them removal. If they want to remove this, they have to pay all their mana for it. But there is also the chance that the opponent might think that we just are going to block, which, let's be frank, we're going to block. They decided to go spend all the mana. Makes sense. That puts us down to one life, so... That's not a bad play on our opponent, not going to lie. They draw a card. We're still in a pickle, because if our... Well, that's a good pull, so... Yeah, we're going to play that. Job to do. And I forgot Snakeskin Veil is a card. Ah, I... 
Okay, the opponent made a misplay. I made a misplay that cost me the game. <laughs> that sometimes happens in Magic. Now, what I should have done is I should have did the Vanishing Verse and then Vanishing Verse when they did the State Skin Fail. I even know they have the card in hand, so that makes me feel a little bit silly. I'm not going to lie. Well, hey, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> yeah, I had a pretty good time. <laughs> That's what we call a oops. Okay. Next up, our opponent is the Prancer. One thing I should also mention in recording this, we are playing this the day before rotation happens. So there might be a lot of spiky decks we're going against tonight in this uh, format, so something to keep in mind. Nevertheless, this is an easy turn one snowfield sinkhole. It seems like our opponent's doing the Esper control seems to be their dish for tonight. Makes sense. Okay, here we're just gonna play Snow Covered Plains, play the Elite Spellbinder. Okay, I did not saw that coming. Well, let's see if we can get a solid coming out of their hand. Okay, we're gonna take out Turgrid. So this is like a venture deck, as for ventures, eh? They're probably playing stuff like the. I was about to say Hermar Polar, so that's. I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of funny. <laughs> Some of the things that you can kind of get a hunch on. Lucky enough, since our opponent did not play any basic lands, we can actually Hagra's Mulling the Pilar here. Neat. Okay, here we're just going to foretell. And now we're just playing the Pillow Fort with the Flump till we draw into one of our late game threats. But chances are our opponent's just going to play the Turgrid, which we're probably just going to Vanishing Verse. Take a professor on it. Thank you very kindly. Yeah, we wanted to remove the Acerac because it would make our opponent do infinite, like, venturing in the dungeon, depending on the dungeon they go into. And that could be a good mana sink for our opponent, so. Best we remove that before it becomes problematic. And let's green out the professor, shall we? Ready to teach a lesson on card game of value. Here we'll play, get the Vorpal Sword. If we draw into one of our later game creatures, that'll be lovely. Well, there's a first Turgrid, and this is going to be a Vanishing First target. We're gonna drain. We'll first see what we draw into before we play the Vorpal Sword. Hmm. This one's hard. I kind of want the removal just to be safe, but we do have removal. I think I actually want the Hive of the Eye Tiger here. Believe it or not. So we're going to play the Vocal Sword, and we're just going to hold up the removal and pass the turn. So we do have a good chance of just, okay, they play that. I'm going to wait till they attach a fly on their creature. They did not. Hmm. We'll get the face of safe in here. Let's go digging. We're going to play the eye twitch. We're now going to equip the flump to flump with the vorpal sword, which the mental image of that alone is kind of hilarious. But yeah, the plan here is I kind of want our opponent to go all eggs in one basket with fly. First fly. Second fly. There we go. Ooh, okay, I did not saw that coming. Well, okay. Fair enough. 
Fair enough. We shall do some learning. We're going to learn Mascot Exhibition. They're going to venture into the Ledogen. Going to create themselves a treasure. And the opponent realizes we can ultimate for a game, so Splendor Run to the Pepper Run. Woohoo! Okay, this one is a pretty good keep. We're going against Mako, so should be an interesting match. I'm going to play ourselves a Swamp, see what our opponent's playing. I'm guessing with Even Death, we're going to be expecting some Swamp shenanigans. No, Alpine Metal. Okay. Here, I think I'm going to foretell because I kind of want to see what the opponent's cooking first. Oh, Mardu, my man. <laughs> Sorry, I like playing Mardu a lot on my free time, so I can respect somebody playing Mardu. I can respect that. <laughs> um, bet, bet you it's like a Mardu control list of some sort. Our opponent's trying to decide whether or not to remove that, because they probably have... Not fl They might have Flump, but there's also other spells like the Power Word of Killing, stuff like that, essentially. So here we didn't draw into a land, unfortunately, so we're just going to foretell again. Put up the poison in the cup, see what our opponent is cooking, as I said. And, well, we can poison the dish. Something you can see. Okay, cutie, and that little cringing of some. Okay, I did not, so. Ooh, that's. Well, that's a problem. Problem is. We can't destroy that with what we have in hand. <laughs> like, we can inevitably when Kaya gets on the battlefield, but at the moment... Well, at least we can destroy that. So, yeah. Opponent is like Mardu Control with the Targer package, so... Yeah, we can lose the life, but uh, we don't want to have that happening inevitably, so they're going to draw a card. We're getting closer to being able to cast the Kaya to get rid of their card draw engine with the Elitzer. But at the moment, we're just going to have to wait and see. Good news is that this is a Mardu control list that's running stuff like Return to the Past, being able to destroy some of the stuff. Okay. <laughs> their own Vanishing Verse. I can't say I'm not surprised, but uh, yeah. Kind of saw that one coming. Well, let's see if they have Vanishing Verse number two. But yeah, that's this is the Catch-22. Since our opponent is running Cosmos Elitzer, they do draw a card each turn. And this looks like a creature list orientation of the version, which our list has ways to deal with it, but not what I would call consistent ways of dealing with it. But yeah, we're here. We're just going to create a cat token. We're going to Kai as the inevitable. Get rid of the Cosmos Elitzer. They are probably going to remove it with something they control and such. Probably a a card that barely made the list, though I could see arguments of playing it. The oh, I'm having a brain fart on the name. It's like Baleful, Baleful Mastery. There's the list. So yeah, Baleful Mastery in three, two. No Baleful Mastery, eh? Okay, okay. There's the poison the cup that they have. They probably are running the same, like, two poison the cups. There is also a possibility, since we saw them playing Turgrid, that they could be playing the discard spell that Lance says draw, discard two cards. Unless we don't have any cards in hand, and instead they draw cards in replacement. So that's a possibility. we got to keep that in mind. But yeah, our opponent's looking here. They're scrying and thinking. For us, I kind of would hope to get a one more Swamp, that way we can hold blood on the Snow Online. But we do have to be a little bit cautious, because they could be running discards, so... Ooh, it's a little bit, uh... Scary. 
Though this is definitely one of the matchups that... Okay, there's the Professor on it, so... That's getting Vanishing Burst. No sweat about it. <laughs> so yeah, they're gonna do card draw. They're playing multiple Onuses. We do get the Swamp we need, so we're just gonna create another Kitty. We're just gonna say bye-bye to, to Professor Onyx, because no. On the bright side, if our opponent is just a Planeswalker-oriented deck, Blood on the Snow does take care of Planeswalkers, so... We have that option, at the very least. There's the Crippling Feel. I do see some control lists running this card. Pretty good removal card, especially against our matchup. Okay, I gotta give the opponent some props of naming Elk. <laughs> Somebody who had to deal with the Eldraine days, I see. <laughs> oh, there's Cosmos Elitzer number two. Ugh. Okay, the reason why I kind of find this funny for those who are not in the know on this, the list that I'm planning to bring back to once uh, Magic gets ready to be played in my local game store or my Friday Night Magic deck is actually going to be a Mardu control list. And with the exception of like stuff like Crippling Field, this is kind of a pretty close approximately of it. So, you know, it's kind of a give credit where credit is due kind of scenario. Know what I mean? I bet you they're also playing the... Okay, I did not suspect to feed the serpent, but I do see the logic in that. That is actually a good card for their list. We don't really have an eat distinction. I'm still surprised they're not playing Baleful Mastery. Maybe they're playing that as a budget for Baleful Mastery, because maybe they don't have the wild cards. That could be a possibility. Or maybe they just don't want the ability for your opponent to draw cards. Nevertheless, we did draw into Kaya number two, so yeah, we're just getting rid of their card draw engine, because we really, 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 really do not want them to have that, to be frank. But yeah, I'm inevitably... Well, actually, no, they might not be playing... Ooh, that's a good card. But now we're in the issue that... Oh boy, they're gonna... Hmm... It's interesting to see this list playing two Feed the Serpent. You would think they would play Baleful Mastery. I mean, it's working for our opponent. Don't get me wrong, but still, it is just kind of like one of those huh kind of moments. Nevertheless, we're just going to play the... We're just going to make our Faceless Haven into a creature, deal three points of damage. We're not going to attack in with the Eye Twitch here because due to the uh, shield, it prevents one point of damage, so it's literally going to bounce off the opponent. On the bright side, we do have Poison Cup to hold up at the very... Well, yeah, we have Poison Cup to hold up because we have one more mana to pay for the one mana cost here, so we should be good. The problem is, since upon a it's out of both our Kayas, which we only have two within the list, so that's a little bit problematic. Okay, our opponent is... <laughs> okay, our opponent is waiting for some Kamigawa news. <laughs> Do we even have a legal moon folk in previous standard and such that I'm not aware of? I'm trying to think if we did or not. I just find that funny. Okay, so. Here, we play the land. I'm just going to put a counter on this. The misplay there is I'm probably should have played everything out before I played the land. Probably. But I feel like our opponent, since we see them playing a little bit of the snow package, I feel like they have a blood on the snow. Oh no, they're going classic uh, Doom Scar with this one. Okay. Well, there's Mascot Exhibition number two. Yeah, this list feels like a list that's playing back in the past or returning the Essentially, a four-cost sorcery spell from the lore hold, which essentially allows them to return multiple spells to their hand. A sorcery spell, an instant spell, sorcery, instant, stuff like that. So here, we're just going to create a kitty. Do this dance again. Hold up, poison the cup. Not, though not really, thanks to this little bugger, so... 
Well, there's a second. It's rewind one. time. Okay, at least we got both of them out of their hands. So, are they a creature deck of any sort? Because we only seen. Oh yeah, the one it sent it to play Mardu. I forgot. <laughs> and they got one of our flumps. No. <laughs> well. Yeah, we should probably keep Tibble in check. Also, another reason why I'm playing Mardu in my Friday Night Magic list, so... The fact... Like I said, I find it kind of hilarious. <laughs> okay, so they got Kaya, they got Search for... Oh, they even got the... Our Tudor spell. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna get rid of this at the very least. Yes, we're gonna pay to one. Ooh, that's a good card. We're keeping that. For now, though, I think they're gonna exile the filler retreat. Makes sense. But here, this is actually a good opportunity because we can just blood on the snow destroy the planeswalkers still have our creature up that might be the play they're probably gonna play the tutor spell here is my guess which if they do that and tutor for a liliana i might hold on the blood on the snow until they play the liliana or professor on it technically do they tutor for on it they could also be tutoring for turgrid i gotta keep that in mind Lucky enough, we have Poison the Cup for that circumstance, but... No, they just decided to go for a second Kaya, so... I think they're sniffing the removal here. So, in that case... We're just going to do it like this. We're just going to... Remove Kaya. Knock down Tibble just a little bit so they don't get to the ultimate, because if they get to the ultimate, we are so dead. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we have enough mana, so let's create some angels. That will force them to bring out the second Kaya, which will be beneficial to us, or board wipe. Lucky enough, they only got land, but they did get one of the good lands. They got the Faceless Haven, so that's a little annoying. Did they play second Kaya? No, they play board wipe. Now do they play second Kaya? Now do they play second Kaya? There we go. And they are probably going to how does this work? Get out and finish the job. Return to owner's hand. I wonder if our opponent's gonna realize that. So yeah, they're not gonna target anything. Okay, now that we got that out of the hand, destroy all planeswalkers, if you would kindly. We're going to return Flump or Eye Twitch. Probably just Eye Twitch. And then we just remove Flump. Sure, we'll pay the one mana. We're going to hold up Poison the Cup, but we're not going to cast it on their turn for, well, kind of obvious reasons. Okay, do they have Tybalt number two? Blood on the snow. Oh, boy. On the bright side... Let's see here. So what are we going to get? We could give them just a spirit with reduced to memory. Could also just confront... Oh, wait, confront the past. What am I thinking? Yeah, that's good. I don't think we have any planeswalkers in our graveyard at the moment, but we can remove theirs. Put X equals free. Make sure we add the one mana for the shield, and we should be good to go.
Okay. So. One, two, three. We will pay the one mana. Say bye bye, Kaya. Play our Faceless Haven, deal two, three points of damage. Our opponent's Faceless Haven is tapped out, so. was that? One, two. So yeah, it looks like their iteration plays free Kaya's. Makes sense. Okay. Well, actually this is perfect because I bet you I know what the opponent's thinking here. We're gonna do this. We're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna attack in the Kaya. It's a big threat. Our opponent's gonna be like, hee hee hee. Not so fast. I'm gonna take your land, make it into my land, and block. Yeah, we saw that coming. Okay. Yes, yeah, wanna pay the one. That's the fifth floor problem. Okay. Mountain Mars. <laughs> Poet's Quill or Elite Spellbinder? I think the answer is none. Oh, that's gonna cost you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's what we needed to draw. Vanishing first. Bye bye, shield. Then we're going to make this into a creature. Make sure Kaya. Try to remove Kaya, but they might be holding up a removal spell. They haven't played this card yet, so. It could be a bluff, but it could not be. It could also be an, is it a bluff? No, it's a vanishing verse. Okay, take out the plump, take out a card draw engine. Makes sense. And now we're pretty much playing the attack the opponent's faceless haven again game, unless they top deck something. Which yet again, does this work? Hang on a minute. Not enough, but uh, still, this is going to fast the game just a little bit. Dealing six points of damage to our opponent each turn. Oh my god. <laughs> Woo. Wow. Woo. That was a really good game. Like, let me check the timer on that. Woo. That's an 18 minute game. <laughs> Though I do have to admit, love my, love my opponent's deck there. It is great to see a Mardu control list. Not gonna lie. <laughs> and that was Flump Control. I definitely can iterate this on a little bit more. And of course, I forgot to show the lesson package, which is one environmental science, reduce the memory, necrotic fumes, pass summoning two mascots, and one uh, confront the past. Do like that uh, lesson package. But overall, I could definitely improve on it by maybe putting some more planeswalker removal, like stuff like Bellful Mastery potentially. That's definitely something I could consider. I could also consider making this into a Mardu package of some sort. Maybe put in some of the more controlly elements of Mardu, such as, for example, the stuff like, for example, Rip Apart in Mardu with Boros colors, just a good unconditional removal for artifact enchantments that could help us against the problematic uh, artifacts we've been seeing. So that's definitely a possibility. There's definitely a lot of ways you can go approach this, but nevertheless, it's always nice to have a little flump to help you draw a card or two. And that is this week's Brewing Labs. If you liked what you see, just please like and subscribe. 
I'm actually having a goal for 500 uh, subscribers for the channel. If I do, I'm going to actually do a quote-unquote uh, interview slash uh, meet my uh, doggo video. So you get a bunch of cute doggo videos. What's there not to love? Nevertheless, I hope you all have a lovely day. As they say, if you...